And that's why she doesn't want to be called Naomi, because she doesn't think of her life as pleasant anymore. But instead, she wants to be called Mara, which means bitter. It's kind of the opposite of what uh, Naomi has. And so, it, when we look at this, I mean, it's just so easy to look at this and say, come on, Naomi, just get your head out of your, all of this murk, and get your head out of this cloud, and, and get beyond it. I don't want to give her a kick in the butt, don't you? But you know, sometimes people need to grieve. And a lot of times we look at this and we try to say, well, you know, your grieving needs to, to be done according to a calendar. When you go to a funeral, I mean, you have basically three days, maybe five days or something, you're supposed to get all of your grieving done in that amount of time, and then you go on with your life. And it doesn't always work that way. Some people deal with grief for a long, long time. When you look at, uh, what's her name? Elizabeth Kubler Ross talks about the, the stages of grief. I mean, you look at it on paper, it just seems so easy. And so, I mean, here's what's going to happen the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and then you move on. Well, it's not that simple. <laughs> I was talking to somebody the other day. He said, hey, you look at the stages of grief, you go through. Maybe this stage, this stage, this stage, and then you go back up here, and then down here, and then you skip down, and then you go back up. And I mean, it's just all over the place. She understood the stages of grief, but it looks a lot cleaner on paper than it is in real life, to be honest with you. And so Naomi just, she, she's continuing to deal with this. It's hard for her. Um, and I mean, all of these changes that have come into our life are probably complicating this as well. So. Uh, it's not easy for Naomi to deal with. And a lot of times, while it's tempting for us to hide our emotions, and sometimes there are times when we should be hiding our emotions, but there are times when we just need to, to let people know, this is what's going on in my life. These are the difficulties that I'm dealing with. And Naomi's come back to the people that she loves, the people that she's connected with, the people who are worshiping the same God that she's worshiping. And so I think part of what Naomi is saying is, I'm comfortable with you people, and so I want to let you know what's happening in my life. And I'm not real happy with the way things that are going on in my life. And so while she's looking at this and she's expressing all of this, it might be because she's comfortable with these people to tell them about what's going on. You know, a big part of what, as we look at it, it's suffering in our life or grief in our life, um, it, it comes because of separation. It comes because of sin in the world. We have these things because of that. But uh, you know, we need to be careful that we're not pushing people, that we're not trying to assign roles to people as they're facing difficulties and as they're, they're facing challenges and grief in their life. And Naomi seems to be very upset with God, which is one of the stages of grief that you can go out, uh, go with. In verse 21, she says, I went out full. As I look at that passage of scripture, I mean, you can almost think of it. Naomi was saying, well, when I left here, I had a husband, I had two sons, I acquired two daughters-in-law while I was away, and now I'm coming back and I'm empty. She's looking at all of the changes that have come into her life and the difficulties and the hardships that are going on. And maybe she is blaming God just a little bit. Why do you call me Naomi since the Lord has testified against me? This is verse 21. The Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. You know, as we look at, uh, look at our lives and we look at the world that we live in, and I think even as we look at Naomi, a lot of what we see here is wrapped up in performance and what we're able to do. We look at that and we want Naomi, we want her to just get, get, get past this. Grieving is messy. We don't like messy stuff. And we just get over it. Stop being messy around us. Stop your grieving. And as I look at this, what Naomi's talking about, she almost seems to be assigning to God some attributes that really aren't correct saying that God um, 
God is not pleased with her because of her actions. One of the things that I see in Scripture is that God loves us. God loves us. It's not based on my performance. It's not based on what I'm able to do or on my accomplishments. God loves me. And once I really begin to grasp that and that becomes a part of my life, then one of the outpourings of that is that I serve God because I recognize the love that he has for me. And as I, as I order my life in that way, I find fulfillment. But a lot of times what we end up doing is we look at God and we say, God loves us. God is up here, but in order for me to see God's love, I need to be serving him. And so we're trying to please God with the things that we're doing and with our actions. And so as a result of that, we're constantly striving to make God happy with the things that we're doing with our life and the accomplishments that we're coming up with. And that just is going to lead to, to struggle. It's going to lead to shame. It's going to lead to disappointment. We need to understand that God loves us. And we need to, to just allow that to saturate our whole being. And then as a result of that love, then we see the outpouring of that. It's kind of like if you take a pitcher and you, you start pouring into the pitcher. You know, once that pitcher is filled up, it's just going to overflow. And that overflowing is our acts of service. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to receive the love that God has for us. God didn't stop loving Naomi because she went off to, to Moab. And that almost seems to be the idea that Naomi has. God didn't stop loving Naomi. As we see in this whole passage, in this whole narrative, God had a bigger purpose for Naomi. And we can look at the end. We know the end of the, I think probably we all know the end of the story. God had a, a much bigger purpose. You know, if there are two things, there's something that we can learn from this. Is sometimes we just, we need time to grieve. We need time to grieve and we need space. But we also need to be careful that we're not losing sight of God and the love that God has for us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your presence here with us. Thank you for your love and for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, help us to honor you with our actions. If we're experiencing grief in our lives, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, continue to guide us through that grieving process. And Lord, whatever happens, I pray that you would help us to continue to keep our eyes focused upon you. We pray this all in Jesus' name.
week. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.